Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to continue working through the NPCs of Stardew Valley. Last week was our very own desperate housewife Jody, and this week we're going to discuss possibly the most vilified member of Pelican Town. We've gone through, I want to say, 13 videos so far other than Jojo Mart. Some lovable characters, some not so much. But I'm not sure that there's been anyone so far that's received the amount of hate comments that I see for Clint on the daily. Maybe Pierre, actually. So let's dive on in and see why Clint gets such a bad rap and whether or not it's deserved. Clint is the town blacksmith, and the profession has apparently run in the family. Clint tells you that he's a blacksmith, his father was one, and he asks you to guess what his grandfather was. You can really start the relationship off on the wrong foot here by just going ahead and saying he was a sarcastic jerk, but like, why would you? Unless you hate the guy, I guess, or maybe your name rhymes with stumps. Beyond that though, Clint honestly doesn't have a lot of dialogue. For the most part, he just talks about how depressed he is, how much he really regrets being a blacksmith, and how he could use some extra cash. I guess spending every night at the saloon takes a toll on his wallet, but nobody seems to notice that he's there for nearly as long as Pam is every single day. In fact, they leave at the same time each night. Could there be something between them? No, probably not. Clint's not actually here for the food, drink, and company, he's really only there for the view. Clint has a very one-sided affection for Emily. In fact, it's so one-sided that he's not even listed as one of her friends by the wiki. Don't misunderstand though, Emily does consider Clint a friend. Just a friend though. And despite Clint's secret longings, things won't ever go his way with Emily, whether you marry her or not. At Three Hearts with Clint, you can stumble into a scene where Clint is talking about his terrible luck with women. Everyone wants to talk about how the worst part of this conversation is when Clint says, I'm a nice guy if you get to know me or whatever, and yeah, that is bad, but let's roll it back a second. What I would like to ask Clint, if the option were available, is, do you have bad luck with men too? Like, do you consider relationships a matter of luck? Because they're not. Sure, stumbling into somebody you gel with might be a coincidence, but building a solid platonic relationship over time isn't really lucky, and falling in love isn't lucky either. You might find the perfect person for you, but you're still going to have to work at it. You don't accidentally get married to a bartender just by showing up every day where they work and sitting in a corner for five hours. So that's my first red flag. Obviously, anyone who says, I'm a nice guy, also, you know, that raises a second red flag for me, so let's throw that one on the pile too. It's interesting that telling Clint to treat women the same as men offers the most friendship, but honestly, he doesn't really seem capable of that. Oh, and by the way, Clint equates his inability to ask Emily out with a doomed future. He might be a little bit fixated. We'll leave that off the list for now, just in case I'm interpreting it wrong. So we're off to a bad start. Two red flags already. Let's see how many we can collect today. We might as well stick with Clint's one true love since he doesn't have a lot of non-scene dialogue to work with. There is one handy little letter that can give us some insight in his bedroom, of all places though. Clint has a letter in his room where he says he knows that she thinks of him as a friend, Emily, by the way, which she does, you know. He says he's too shy that he'll never have the courage to tell her the truth, and he acknowledges that he'll probably just throw his confession away. But honestly, even in his confession letter, he didn't confess anything. I mean, he implied it, but even in his letter that will never see the light of day, he still couldn't talk about his feelings, which is pretty sad when we think about it. Well, no red flag here. Let's just move on to the stalking part of today's video. During Clint's six heart scene, you can find Clint cowering behind a bush, waiting to ask Emily out on a date. You won't see this scene if you've married Emily or if you've seen one of her heart events coming up here, but you can absolutely see it while you are pursuing her, which makes the context kind of strange. By the time you get there, Clint has already decided it's a bad idea. He's waiting for Caroline to leave so he can slink away, defeated by his own anxiety. But you threaten him with never upgrading your tools again, and of course, the threat of unemployment is much scarier than someone saying no, so he asks Emily on a date. Again, this is very strange if you're pursuing Emily, but probably not from her perspective, since she doesn't appear to see him as a prospective romantic partner. Anyway, let's go with, I don't know, half a red flag here. He did talk to Emily, but not until you found him hiding in a bush and you had to threaten his livelihood. If you happen to be increasing hearts with Emily and Clint at the same time, this next cutscene can be even more awkward. In fact, um, this is possibly my favorite headcanon, that Emily's clothing therapy event should happen on the same day that Clint invites her to the carnival, just for the extra sad. Emily dresses up some of the villagers, including Clint, who ends up wearing, I would say, a stylish little number, you know? 
Emily thinks he looks adorable, but not in the way that Clint wants. He leaves after being called cute, and Emily expresses her romantic interest in you when the two of you are all alone. One problem though, Clint runs back into change because he's embarrassed by his new clothes. He sees the two of you together, and that's really not what Clint wanted to see. He says congrats to the farmer and leaves. And this is another line that I think is a red flag. He doesn't congratulate Emily and the farmer, just the farmer. I think Clint has this mindset that a woman is a prize to be won, so he congratulates you on your apparent victory in this competition, like Emily is some kind of shiny statue to put on his shelf instead of an actual human being. I don't know. I was going to give this one half a red flag because I might have been misinterpreting it, but there's one more piece of it that I think is worth noting. When you have eight or more hearts with Emily, which you need to trigger that scene, she can tell you that she thinks Clint is mad at her because he never looks at her anymore. She always thought they were friends. That's straight from her mouth. I guess Clint doesn't want to talk to her now that she's interested in the farmer. I know it's tough to find out that your crush isn't into you. The dynamics of a relationship can really change if one person expresses romantic interest and it isn't reciprocated. But if the friendship is that important, you work for it even when you're hurt, you know? This is just a game, so there's no recovery. I'd like to think that Clint would, you know, eventually come around after a while and they'd be close again, but I'm not sure that he was ever interested in Emily as a friend. So we've got three and a half red flags, I think, right? Well, that's not so good. Things are, yeah, not looking great for Clint, the supposed nice guy. Let's go ahead and talk about one more minor point before moving on to the creepiest dialogue in the game. With a telephone in your house, you can call the local stores to check their hours for the day. By the way, this is a great way to see if Marnie is in for the day if you don't have the wiki pulled up. Anyway, each vendor has at least a couple lines. One is usually kind of a joke line, and at least one covers the hours of the store. Clint's like joke or throwaway line is that, your voice sounds really nice over the phone. Thanks, bro. That's really neat, but please never say that again. Then he slams the receiver down instead of hanging up like he does in each of his other messages. And that's kind of weird. But let's just go ahead and move on to the big one. When you've completed the movie theater, either through the community center route or Joja, you can take villagers to the movies. That's awesome. You know what's not awesome? Clint's movie scene is straight out of a nice guy horror story, at least if you're playing a female farmer. As a guy, he mostly just complains before deciding it was an okay time. As a woman, he asks if you're on a date. He drinks from his flask. He does actually do this with the male farmer too. And then he says, you can put your head on my shoulder if you're tired or not. <laughs> then when you're done, he says, that was kind of fun, right? No, Clint, I didn't appreciate you slobbering all over me at the movie theater because you got drunk in public and the lights were off so you could imagine that I was Emily. I'm gonna go ahead and give that one, like, I don't know, a flag and a half. Listen. Maybe Clint has social anxiety. I really don't know. There are scenes like the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies where he says, no one noticed his special shoes that make me think he just doesn't really understand how other people think. And that makes sense if he was raised by his family to be a blacksmith and just didn't spend a lot of time with other people. But no one cares about your shoes, Clint. We're here for a once a year occasion and it's not that you put on nice shoes. You know, we've all got our own issues to deal with and some people struggle with social cues. I think I would maybe give him the benefit of the doubt if it weren't for the part where he ignores Emily after you have eight hearts with her. To me, that just feels like a classic nice guy who doesn't understand why he can never get the girl. Like relationships are some kind of transaction where you can just give your target an amethyst twice a week and eventually they'll fall in love with you. Wait a second. What do you think about Clint? Is he just awkward? Misunderstood? A little bit creepy? Leave me a comment down below with your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next video.